First degree murder is the most severe homicide crime and is always premeditated and carried out with intent. Second degree murder is carried out with intent, but no premeditation. Third degree murder is the lowest criminal homicide with no intent to kill and no premeditation. Finally, there is book murder. Hello, welcome to my channel, Another Bibliophile Reads. My name is Greg, and today I am going to do a tag from Noah, the bookworm. It is called The Book Murderer Tag. It is a little tongue-in-cheek, because Noah describes people who harm books as book murderers. I was tagged by a few people to do this, so I'm going to go ahead and knock out this little tag. There are only six prompts. Hello, welcome to my channel. Another bibliophile reads. My name is Greg, and today I'm going to knock out a short little tag, the book murderer tag, created by Noah, the bookworm. This tag is a little tongue and cheek. Noah describes people who harm or damage books as book murderers. So he created this tag just to have a little bit of fun. I was tagged by a few other fellow booktubers. So I'm gonna get this one out the door. It's nice and short. Prompt number one. What are your thoughts on spine breaking? I see no use in breaking spines. It harms the book. The book is um, less valuable after you do that. And um, let me show you an example of a broken spine. This is, of course, Cities in Flight by James Blish. You can see this huge crack down the center. Someone just ripped it open and cracked it. But you can open the book to that crack, and it looks like this book is eventually going to fall apart. I don't do that. Take a look at this book. This is Money Shot by Christina Faust. I read this book a number of years ago. Look at that perfect spine. It is quite possible to read a book without damaging the spine. Yes, you have to be a little careful, but um, just, just hold these up together. Which spine is better? Prompt number two. Bookmarks are dog-earing pages. I don't see any reason whatsoever to dog ear a page. I know some people try to be careful, only do a minimal dog ear, but bookmarks are much better. Let me show you. I am a bit of a bookmark collector. This is my wooden box, and it is filled with bookmarks. Here is just a simple selection. I have more bookmarks than I know what to do with. I always use them, so I'm totally against dog-earing pages. Prompt number three, page tearing or ripping. Even though I've seen a few people describe this, I don't see it being done that often. I know Noah described that some people would tear out like back pages of a book when they have lists of other books in a series and they go to the bookstore. I, I just don't get that. Why not just take a, a snapshot of that page on your phone? Assuming, of course, that you have a phone and you were not way back in the 80s. Back in the 80s, I do remember ordering books. You remember that you used to have coupons in the back of the books where you could order books. And um, they say, please do not send cash. 
I was in high school and I sent cash. I still got my books. I would not do that today because they don't take mail orders for books anymore anyway. And page ripping, I guess, is if you just accidentally tear a page. I don't think I've done that very often, but I'd be very upset if I did. Prompt number four, writing in books. There are three answers for this. No, hell no, and bloody hell no. I do not annotate my books. My handwriting is absolutely atrocious. A chicken scratching in the dirt would look at my handwriting and go, that's really bad. Also, I'm not a good speller. So if I were to try to write in my book, the handwriting would be illegible and there would be misspellings. That's not something you want to keep in a book. There is a naughty, wicked, evil man named Mortimer Adler, who was a college professor and an author, who suggested to people that you're befriending your book when you write in it. That man is burning in hell. Well, not literally, because I don't believe in hell, but uh, he would be burning in hell if there were hell for giving out that advice. Prompt number six, or prompt number five, ripping covers and book binding. I don't really understand why someone would rip off a cover of a book just because they don't like it. Way, way back when I was a bookseller in the 80s and 90s, if you had a mass market paperback that did not sell, you did not return that book to the publisher. You ripped off the front cover and only sent the cover back to the publisher. Booksellers and bookstores were supposed to throw those books in the trash can. But occasionally, if you saw a book like that and a bookseller took it home, most people looked the other way. So I used to have a huge collection of mass market paperbacks without their covers. Along the way through life, I dumped those and they finally did hit the dumpster. So um, not a good thing to do with your books. Book binding is when you um, bind a couple books together. I find that a very bizarre thing to do. Some of them are quite artfully done. I've seen some videos and they kind of look pretty, but the book is so huge, I would not want to hold it. So that again, that is something I would never do. Prompt number six, who do you tag? I think a lot of people have done this tag already. They've probably been um, tagged by other people, but I'm gonna go with uh, Jim's books for reading and stuff. I am going to go MJ at reading this life and Jim at mystery and mayhem. Thank you all for watching and keep on reading.